Shalom and welcome back to the tea table, my friends. I believe today's message is really going to speak to your spirit, especially if you are going through a difficult time. Have you ever found yourself in what seemed like a losing battle and everything you did just seemed to be of no avail? You tried to look at the situation through spiritual eyes and wondered how this was somehow going to be turned into good. You may have even told yourself that this whole mess wasn't even your fault or you didn't even start this whole thing. You felt like Joseph in Genesis 39 verse 20 where we are told, So he took Joseph and threw him into the prison, where the king's prisoners were held, and there he remained. My friends, it wasn't like Joseph was in prison a few days before the Lord started to move on Joseph's freedom. We are told in Genesis 41 verse 1, When two full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. That's two full years in prison, and a prison is still just a prison, especially in Egypt, with the summer heat and bugs and mice, and you probably slept on the floor on, on straw or hay. And why? Because someone lied about you, and someone else had the power to throw you in prison, and you didn't deserve the punishment you got. You know, I'm sure at times Joseph got really angry at the justice system he received. And at other times he probably asked God, why did you allow this to happen? I'm also pretty sure Joseph didn't say to himself, one day I will be second in charge of everything. Joseph probably didn't have a clue what was going on. And if he recalled Psalm 37 verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Joseph was still in prison for nothing that he did, and God probably seemed far away from him at times, just as God may seem to be far away from you while you are in your lion's den or your fiery furnace. But the truth is still the truth. And when we are going through anything that seems to be bigger than ourselves, we need to remember that God is in control, and although we may seem to be lonely in our times of trouble, we are not alone in our times of trouble. As many of you know, I do not have a love of flying. Once, a pilot asked me while we were in flight if I had a fear of flying, to which I responded, no. I have a fear of not flying. One thing I used to tell myself, especially when we hit heavy turbulence, was if I can't get out of a situation, the next best thing is to invite God into the situation. Did the turbulence go away? Sometimes. But most of the times, it didn't. But I knew that God had a purpose for me and my life, and I knew it wasn't to be a statistic on a transatlantic flight. Well, I said all that to say this. God's words to us are God's promises to us, regardless if they seem to be working or not. And one of the many promises our Heavenly Father has made to us concerning the battles that we face in life is found in Psalm 18, verse 39. For you equipped me with strength for the battle. You made those who rise against me sink under me. In other words, although you may seem like grasshoppers in your own sight, as we are told in Numbers 13.33, the truth is, you are not grasshoppers next to the giants in your life, but you are ruthless giant killers in the hand of an almighty God who has equipped you with the strength for the battle and has made those who rise against you sink before you. And this is true, regardless if you are able to see it with your eyes or not. Because according to 2 Corinthians 5.7, Indeed, our lives are guided by faith, not by sight. We have all heard the expression, 
It's not over until the fat lady sings, or another way they say it is, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. It means that one should not assume to know the outcome of an event which is still in progress. More specifically, the phrase is used when a situation is or appears to be nearing its conclusion. It cautions against assuming that the current state of an event is irreversible and clearly determines how or when the event will end. This would have been a great expression for Joseph when he was locked up in prison, or for any of us when we find ourselves in a battle that seems not only to be out of control, especially our control, but that we are on the losing or defeated side. One of the many things I have learned is although God may seem not to be on time in delivering me out of my troubles, He is never late, and although I may really wish that God would have acted the instant the problem starts, He may in fact not move on my behalf until the very last second of the battle. Why do you think God would act that way? Well, probably the same reason why when we were learning to ride a double wheel a bike, or we were teaching our children to ride a bike for the first time, that we didn't step in and stop them from falling so they could learn to balance themselves on their own. And like little children, God wants us to learn to balance and depend on Psalm 18, verse 39. For you, O Lord, have equipped me with strength for the battle. You made those who rise against me sink under me. When we get to that place of knowing that God has already done all that he has promised to do, then we stand on our own two feet, and we are able to rise up for any battle, just as we are told in Ephesians 6, verse 13. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. And with that, I leave you with this. Yevarechecha Adonai veyishmerecha. Ye'er Adonai panavilecha vihunecha. Yisa Adonai panavilecha veyesemlecha shalom. The Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord cause the light of his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn all of his attention to you and give to you the peace of God. God bless you, my friends, and I'll see you again next week at the tea table.